I'm Amy Caldwell from the Mass General Hospital in Boston, here to discuss the article, Silent Rupture of Silicone Breast Implants, High Resolution Ultrasound Scans, and Surveys of 584 Women by Mark Salzman. When silicone implants were reintroduced into the market, one of the requirements was for interval imaging with MRI. MRI was going to be used to detect implant rupture, which we now know is 7 to 24%, depending upon the manufacturer. However, compliance has been low. Uh, the reasons are multifactorial, including cost and inconvenience for our cosmetic patients, as well as the question of necessity for the reconstructive patients who are followed very closely by oncology, as well as by plastic surgery. In this study, the author and staff in nine private practice offices used high-resolution ultrasound to screen 584 women. High-resolution ultrasound is gaining traction as a useful tool for the detection of seromas, implant ruptures, and other things. Plastic surgeons and staff received one-day training in the ultrasound. Suspicious scans were reviewed by an experienced plastic surgeon to determine if they showed rupture. In this study, 82 women had evidence of ultrasound rupture. Half of these patients elected to have surgery. At the time of surgery, 75% of the ruptures were confirmed. In addition, the surgeons found four ruptures that were not seen on ultrasound. The author was also interested in seeing about women's feelings and attitudes about silent rupture, as well as their desire for screening. Surveys showed that almost all women would want to know if their implant was ruptured. 95% would want the ruptured implant removed, and 96% would get a future ultrasound screening test. The findings of this study show that women are interested to know if they have an implant rupture, and the vast majority would have the implant removed if they did know it had a rupture. In addition, the study shows the potential for high-resolution ultrasound to be used in the plastic surgeon's office to help detect the rupture. Although the results weren't perfect, the author suggests that with experience, the number of false positives and false negatives can be minimized. We do know we're sure to see this technology used in the future, and I'd like to congratulate the author on this study.